uh, Kuciak, which is our new defensive line coach now, he came from Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he was at Miami for a year uh, last year, and then uh, I would see uh, ten years uh, at Detroit the year before, uh, before that. He's a real high energy rotation kind of guy, so uh, Josh Allen would could work. Uh, in our scheme, um, he worked with a guy named Cameron Wake down in Miami, and of course Ziggy Ansah in Detroit. Are you listening? Damn. Yes. Ron Bo Sports here, representing the Niner Empire organization worldwide, where football, especially the red and gold football. It never ends. How you doing, fam? Have you been watching what's going on? Do you know DeForest Buckner is going to the Pro Bowl? Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! And you know, right now, and as I think about it, okay, he didn't get the votes needed. He's going in because Fletcher Cox got hurt. Actually, Fletcher Cox is still probably better than... Honestly, because, you know, I try not to be the homer. <laughs> but Fletcher Cox is probably the best guy in his position in the NFL for now. But I do believe somewhere in the very near future, it will be our guy. Because you look around the league, there ain't a lot of players better than DeForest Buckner. Fletcher Cox is one of them, but, man, Buck is, Buck is a bad dude. 12 sacks this year, finally! Double digit sacks. Ooh, I wish I could remember. I made a prediction weeks ago about how many sacks when Buck got before he got to double digits. I said, how many sacks over 10 will he get? I think I said 12. <laughs> I think. I might have said 13, but I know it was somewhere like that. Because I just wanted him to get to 10 so he could say he had double digits. And then after that, I says, he may go over it. So he did. And by the way, that 12 sacks puts Big Buck at number four in the NFC. Eighth in the NFL overall. You got yourself a top 10 sack master playing for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. And that hasn't happened. Oh, you got to go all the way back to 2012. Alden Smith hadn't been put in jail or declared insane yet. Alden had 19 and a half sacks. Nin- think about that, 19 and a half sacks. Alden was a beast. But you know what really kills me? Here's what I think about. What if Alden could have behaved himself and stayed with the 49ers all through these years? I don't know if that would have happened. That was 2012. We're talking eight years ago. I don't even know if he'd still be effective right now. I don't, Alden's not that old as I remember. Alden left us, he'd probably be like 31, something like that. Am I right on that? Anyway, could you imagine? Because Alden made his living because of the fact that Cowboy was in them inside. Can you imagine? Buckner on the inside and Alden Smith outside. <laughs> because the Cowboy was a monster and Alden, man, he, made, he paved the road for Alden to get in there because they were so busy trying to stop the Cowboy. Alden would just slide around and say, this is what we're trying to get now. We're trying to get that guy to be opposite a Big Buck to come around the side and kill that quarterback. We've got to put some pressure on him this year, fam. But not since then have we had anybody like I mean, Alan Smith is, it's a long time ago, and Buckner finally, after all this time, we got a guy that really is dangerous. They're going to help him out. They're going to get some more people in here really soon. And hey, the secondary, we got Joe Woods coming on over to coach with the 49ers. And, and listen, Joe Woods was not excused from the Broncos. Vic Fangio, of course, as you know, is on over there, and he will be taking over uh, the Denver head man duties, and he wants to bring in his own guys. That's nothing unusual about that, and Joe Woods doesn't fit the program. Well, you know, Joe Woods may fit the program. He may be even better than some of the Fangio's guys, but the fact of the matter is Vic can get in there, and he brings his own guy in. He doesn't have to tell him what to do. He doesn't. They know what to expect, and Vic can just sit back and orchestrate from a, a head coach uh, position. You know, we should have made Vic our head coach years ago. La, la, you know, I, I know. There's no point in going back there. But it would have been, I, I, we'll see what Vic looks like as a head coach, though. What does Vic look like leading the troops from a position of being the man in charge? I guess we'll see. 
but good on Vic. And we got Joe Woods out of the deal. And Joe goes under the title of passing game coordinator. Now, if you're a defensive back, corner, doesn't matter what you are, safety, you're going to come in and you're going to be under Joe. Here's the nice thing about Joe Woods that I like a lot. Joe Woods has a lot of experience because Halfley, I have a feeling Halfley was for uh, the kind of ball players that already know what to do. They're established players and all you got to do is give them the plan on the week and let them go and they know what to do. Halfley's not a teacher. Uh, and you could see that from the last two years, maybe even before that, that uh, guys didn't know what they were doing out there. Basically didn't know what they were doing. And at some point, I think they were going on their own. I, if you look back and investigate, I'll bet you Richard Sherman was teaching those guys everything they knew. Halfley was just there in position of a defensive back coach. But like I said, I don't think he was a good teacher. Probably the first thing Kyle said is, or Lynch, whoever interviewed Joe, says, Joe, we need a guy in here who can teach the youngins how to play the position in the NFL. Are you my guy? And Joe with all the music spirits. John, Kyle, you know me. Well, hey, look back. Do you, when's the last time you remember the Denver Broncos having a, a pathetic secondary? You probably, man, John and Kyle, they look at each other. <laughs> you, sir, have the job. Welcome to San Francisco. And, now, and Joe Woods is it. So we got Joe Woods now, and I suspect that secondary's going to look a lot different this year. Thank God I'm so tired of that secondary getting smoked on the same place. And you, I mean, you can run anything on the 49ers. A fade route? Go ahead. You want to? I mean, anything you want to do, the 49ers are susceptible to. Ah, uh, change is being made and we've got to work. So I'm looking forward to that. Yes! We, we still need some other coaches, but, you know, we're doing Hey, you know what, though? This is a good deal. Because if Rich Scangar Scangarello went over there, <laughs> Rich is now a Denver Bronco OC. Jesus. Here's the thing that worries me about that the most. And for selfish reasons, it is believed that Rich is the reason why Nick Mullins came all looking like he looked. I know Kyle Shanahan is the quarterback whisperer, but he had a guy, his right-hand man, Rich, was working on because Kyle had a lot on his plate. Rich focused on the quarterbacks, and Jimmy G's success could have something to do with Rich as well. So we had an outstanding person there that we've lost. Who's going to replace Rich is what worries me more than anything else. And I wish, wish Rich, I wish him well. I do. But I really wish we hadn't lost him. In fact, the 49ers... At the beginning, did not allow for any interview. As you know, they blocked that. And Rich may have looked like, I don't know, maybe Kyle walks by him, Rich looks all down and out. Rich, what's up, man? I wanted to go and interview for that job, and you blocked it, Kyle. I don't... All right. <laughs> don't whine. I'll, I'll, read, I'll phone him up and tell him he can talk to you. And, you know, Rich goes on. This is for his, it's a business decision. The NFL is a business. Rich went over there, he got paid more. It puts him in position if he does a good job that the next step, of course, would be uh, a club that he runs on his own. So, you know, these are, these are things that guys gotta, gotta work toward and Rich is on his way. Hey, here's the thing. Antonio Brown, since the 49ers are we're intertwined with Antonio right now. Have you seen the Vegas, the Vegas odds? We're like number one to get Antonio Brown. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, you got Jerry talking, you got all these guys saying things about him. But I got to tell you right now, fam, the bleep is about to hit the fan because we've heard from Mike Tomlin about the situation that went on in Pittsburgh. We've heard from Art Rooney Jr. Well, I'm sorry, don't call him Art Rooney Jr. <laughs> He's Art, Art Rooney the second. Hey, from where I come from, if you're the second, then you're junior. Okay, but Art Rooney the second. Esquire. <laughs> He's had his say about Antonio Brown. And here's the thing. Uh, Antonio Brown needs to respond. Bruce Arians has gotten involved too. But Antonio needs to respond to some of these things because here's the thing. If I hear what Tomlin's saying and everybody else, and especially Art Rooney the second, I may have to believe what they're saying, right? So maybe you need to say something. Antonio Brown says he is going to say something. And he's just going to sit back and wait. He did get into a little tweet battle with Bruce Arians, call him a diva. But 
he's gonna go ahead and make something said soon. In fact, he did make that announcement already. He said he will soon subject himself to an interview in order to be able to tell his side of the story. And he left out with this note. This is on social media. Stand up for yourself and stop allowing others to tell you who you are, what you are, and how you are. Many are watching your every step, so be you and be consistent. Via Pops, at Dion Sanders. I haven't been watching what they've been saying about him, but apparently Antonio has had enough of people taking shots. So that interview is probably coming up really soon. He's going to tell his side of the story. Antonio, man, I wish I could do this interview. I wish I could ask him the questions he needs to be asked. I really do. <laughs> I'm serious. Because you've got to ask him those penetrating questions that are going to bring out the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you can make a decision as to who you believe is telling the truth about the whole situation. He's been accused of a lot of bad things. Some of the antics we've seen on the sidelines in Pittsburgh, they weren't from a man who's just being normal. Right? Something had to spur him to behave that way. He hadn't been behaving that way all the time. <laughs> Aside from what Bruce Arians says as him being a demon, Bruce didn't even, Bruce, ah, let's leave him out of it for now, just to make this story short. It's going to be coming down to whatever he says that's going to clear him. Because the 49ers are probably thinking to themselves, we'd like to just stay away from that situation or... They're going to say we're going to have to get this player because we could use him to take us over to the next level. We'll see what happens with that and probably find out real soon. But I would suggest Mike Florio, because Mike Florio is the kind of guy that asks some kind of questions you need to ask. If you're going to get a chance to clear your name on this, Mike Florio would probably be the best for Antonio Brown to talk to. And then we get a clear picture of what's going on. And Mike will put his spin on it as well and lead you in one direction or the other, depending on how he feels toward Antonio Brown. I, I think he probably does like Antonio, because I can't believe everything they're saying about Antonio Brown. I mean, come on, it's really bad news. But that's a side that's all pissed off and want to get him out of town as soon as they can. You know, I the other day I heard that Josh Allen was going to be on the South Squad of the Senior Bowl. I was all excited because I, you know, our Kyle Shanahan's coach in the South, him and our coaching staff. So they get an up close and very personal look at Josh Allen. And then come draft day, you know, they can make a clear assessment. They've got a clear assessment of this guy. They can go ahead and get him or not. You know, because I still think Nick Bosa's is not going to happen. It is possible, though. But it doesn't look real good. And then if Josh Allen is the guy, now you know quickly, get him! If they don't really know for sure they're gonna trade down, I, I don't know what side of the camp you're on. Do you want him to trade down? Oh, should they get Josh Allen? I know there's a lot of people who want Josh Allen. And there's probably other players that they're looking at as well because maybe they've got some kind of strategy lined up in the draft like they normally do. And I, I just really, we're going to find out about that, but I was all excited. But hey, you know what, fam? Tell you what, not to worry, because I feel the 49ers have done good, well in the draft last year. Not so well a year before, but it was their first year. You know what we need to realize? It was their first year. People are getting mad. Fire him in this. Fire this guy. I mean, he made some mistakes because Ruben Foster lost his mind. Solomon Thomas may have been a little overrated, but we're still going to find out about Solomon Thomas in this upcoming season. But fam... Exciting days are coming up ahead. I just know. Rambo! I am saying. Last time we talked, yeah. you were swinging off of Cleveland Farrell's job. <laughs> Who are you rolling with now? I, yeah, see, I'm going to wait till the combine, man. I, I can't make no decisions right now. The I, combine? Yeah. Dudes wearing panties, <laughs> competing for the Olympics? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I'm... Guess I'm please. still rolling with both of myself. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And I'm gone. Mmm. Ah. Uh, then I gotta tell you though, you know the 49ers, one thing about the 49ers, if they really want something really bad enough, if they're really impressed with something, we've seen what they do in the draft. And they'll stop at nothing to each, but last year, hey, the last two years they've been with us, they've traded up going after certain players. Now, I don't know if you can trade to two to one, but if they want Bosa, uh, they might be able to get him somehow. I don't know how they're going to do it to make some deal with the... Uh, well, you know what they could do? Uh, they could go ahead and trade. They got to give up more because maybe... Who knows? The Cardinals... Cardinals aren't saying a word. And that's smart of them. 
No, it's not. If you want Bosa, or if you want people to come and get Bosa, you talk it up, right? Like the Cleveland Browns did a few years ago when they went after Miles, Miles Garrett. Hey. All right, you know what? In the days ahead, we're going to figure this out. All right? Because I got to, there's always games being played in the draft, especially weeks ahead before it happens. We still got to do free agency, so let's not even get jumping uh, too far ahead. And you know what? Let me, I, let me go, let's go to the, uh, the cam now and check out and see what's going on with you. I got some, I'm going to tell you the truth, it's coach coming up. <laughs> you know I always go to my man, the coach. Go get him right now. Matter fam, of course, with the dilemmas going on these days, I thought I'd go to my go-to guy. I got Coach Tim here. Coach, how you doing? Fantastic. How you doing? Coach, it's doing great, man, because I'm looking at the plans for the future. I'm looking for what I'm, what I'm thinking is going to happen. I'm looking at what the media is saying. But there's one thing, Coach, that's really making me laugh. And we do this each and every year. But there's usually a division between two players, sometimes three, but right now, it's hitting up. I mean, the energy level on, uh, is it? And I know for a fact that you do indeed believe Nick Bosa is the answer, but the camps are getting divided now. You're healing people. People are getting emotional about Josh Allen versus Nick. And we're already, some people are already conceding that we're probably gonna lose Nick, but the Cardinals aren't, the Cardinals aren't giving indication as to who they're gonna get, not really. So coach, I'd like to point out some things like the 4-3 defense, the 3-4 defense. These guys are coming from two different schemes. Uh, some people say that doesn't matter. If it's a good football player, it's a good football player. Because you know what we might do? Let's look at some of the technique that is a difference that couldn't matter between the 4-3 and the 3-4 and why Nick Bosa versus Josh Allen may be more desirable for the 49ers scheme. What are you thinking? Yeah, um... Well, I've been doing a lot of analysis. Uh, I've been looking at, because of some of the commentary that we've had and some of the guys uh, I've had discussions with on their chats. Mm. And I went ahead and did a little bit more research into Josh Allen and Clayton Farrell. And uh, yeah, there's another those are the top, yeah, those are the top three guys with, along with Bosa. Bosa's number one uh, because him and Farrell are similar in the sense that they're 4-3 defensive ends, right? Mm, yep. They're not normally stand-up guys. They're normally in, you know, free, uh, hand in the dirt, coming off the edge guys. Um, the difference between them and Josh Allen is Josh Allen is a, he can play, uh, he plays mostly as a stand-up end. Uh, it oftentimes looks like a uh, four, four-man defensive front. But I guess for all intents and purposes, it's a 3-4 scheme that they mm. run at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why he has the pass coverage responsibilities that he has. Uh, his uh, technique is pretty much uh, get around the edge and get pressure. He doesn't do a lot of inside moving. Um, he can come off if he gets stalemated by a tackle. He can come off inside, but his strength is not... Uh, to do that is to stay on the outside. So he keeps an outside shoulder technique all the time on his rushes, pretty mm. much. Now, uh, Kuciak, which is our new defensive line coach now, he came from Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was at Miami for a year uh, last year, and then, uh, let's see, uh, 10 years uh, at Detroit the year before, before that. He's a real high-energy rotation kind of guy. So... Uh, Josh Allen would could work uh, in our scheme. Um, he worked with a guy named Cameron Wake down in Miami, and of course Ziggy Ansa in Detroit. Uh, Ziggy Ansa was um, uh, primarily he started out as a three-four outside linebacker, and then they moved him down into with his hand in the dirt uh, in a four-three mm -hmm. on pass rushing downs. Mm -hmm. So he did both, but he uh, like Allen. He Allen can do both as well. Um, but I, I see Allen as being more of a stand-up Leo in our defense. A mm. uh, guy that's going to, or he could play Sam. He's big enough. Uh, he's 6'5", they're, they're saying he's around 260 now, 255, 260. Mm. So he can play the position, but his strong his strength is uh, probably in a 3-4. Um, but I, 
if we pick either one of those three guys, Farrell, Bosa, whoever's available there, uh, or Allen, we're going to be good. Mm. We're going to be good. Yeah, hey, that's reassuring. Uh, All right. But yeah, but the difference in technique, though, Coach, you know, let's the difference between the 4-3 and 3-4 could be uh, the deciding factor. Because with that narrative, it goes like John Lynch and, and, and the guys are sitting in the office like, you know, Who's going to be the guy best for our scheme? Is it going to be Nick for the reasons we just stated? Or is it going to be Joshua? Uh, Josh, should I say, uh, for, the, for his versatility? You got the coach. The Cardinal coach is going a little crazy. And it was pretty funny because Tony calls in uh, yesterday. He points out the guy's a genius. He's going to motivate Rosen by saying things like, I like Kyler Murray. <laughs> and Josh is probably sitting there thinking, What? He's and even if he's bluffing, he's probably not going to let Josh know. Josh, go play along, play along. Don't worry about it. You're fine. You're not going anywhere. I just want to make sure that in the deals we get uh, for the trade, uh, there's going to be pop potentially trades coming up to us. We want to be in the best position to put. We're going to bait the hook and see what we can get from anybody who needs a quarterback. You're my guy. You're my you're my guy, Josh. Don't worry. I, but then again, it could be you want to motivate Josh and go ahead and let that still stay in his mind that he's got to take it up a notch from where he is or just keep pushing hard or is this guy putting this on is he serious is he really trying to fish for draft picks I, I, I you know what are you thinking well I'm thinking he's blowing smoke <laughs> and uh, I think Josh Rosen has established himself as the quarterback the franchise quarterback for for the uh, Cardinals mm. he's looking for somebody that's looking for a quarterback that's probably why he threw the name out there um, there's some teams uh, that are looking to trade up, and they're going to be looking at the 49ers spot. They're going to be yep. looking at the Cardinals spot. Um, it's pretty much a given, I think, around the league that they know the Cardinals are not going to take a first-round pick quarterback, um, regardless of who the guy thinks his guy is or who people think his guy is. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't buy it that he's trying to motivate Josh Rosen either, because Rosen's already pretty highly motivated. Yeah. He's got the job to be a winner so I think that's about all you need there uh, I so I think he's fishing for a trade yeah and that makes sense but him saying that if I'm Rosen I don't know how that would psychologically what an impact would that have on me why, why did he say that if it had if it was up to him he'd take Kyler Murray in a heartbeat he'd have it God whoa oh what am I chop liver <laughs> damn Coach, the house cleaning is going on right now in Santa Clara. It's pretty drastic as it has been for the last two seasons. We no longer have a strength and conditioning coach. And what I'm more concerned about is not so much as their exit, but who are they bringing in? I mean, we just we actually we have a new uh, a defensive line coach. Okay. But what about the rest of those places? How are they going to be filled up? Something else too, Coach. Uh, with all the Halfley and all these guys leaving, is this going to make... Do you see a difference being made, or is this just, uh, is this just something that's taking place? Because is luck still the key factor? It's big. With all those injuries, you can switch all these strength and conditioning guys and nutritionists and everybody else, hang things for superstition all over the clubhouse and everything else. I'm still wondering, is it going to be good luck? Or can, can, that, uh, can those superstitions make a big difference? Actually, I think they can. Yeah, I don't know if you know, we've talked about this a long time ago. I used to be involved in bodybuilding when ah, I was in my 20s. True, right, right. And, uh, you know, we had athletic trainers. Um, when I coached, I coached semi-pro for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We had athletic trainers, and I, I had three, four different athletic trainers, and every one of them had their own philosophy and how they did things. So some of them worked. Uh, ours was a peculiar situation because most of our guys didn't, uh, it wasn't like an NFL schedule where you're practicing four or five days a week, uh, doing film work a six day and then playing on Sunday. Mm. Um, so I think, uh, we're going to get, there's a lot of them out there to choose from. I think we're going to get a good one. Um, you know, John Lynch and Shanahan, they both know what they want out of that strength coach. Um, so there's a couple of reasons why players have so many of these kinds of injuries. And I think there's things that they can do that can correct that, uh, with some specific training. Um, and, uh, you know, that's yet to be seen, but, you know, we can speculate of course, but yeah. 
I think it, you know, I think things will improve. Um, uh, Richard Wright. <laughs> That was his name, right? Richard Wright. Yeah, Richard, Richard, Richard Wright, I'll never forget his name. Not a very, God. <laughs> yeah. Not a very experienced coach yeah. at, at the NFL level, from what I understand. Uh, so um, that, that could have been his, his undoing, maybe. Uh, you know, have a longer season. Um, you know, the games, obviously, you're up against a much higher caliber of athletes uh, uh, week to week. So, you know, all that has to be, you have to be able to make adjustments. Any successful coach, whatever he does, you've got to have the ability to be flexible and adjust as you as you go through the season. And yeah. I think that was the, the case was they weren't doing that. Ah. And it, the, the injuries continued. And some of them were bone injuries, which, you know, you really can't do much about. Uh, but that could, that could be nutritional, too. I mean, uh, right. you know, guys that young getting broken you know broken arms like Buster did and uh jimmy jimmy name? Ward, jimmy, ward. jimmy ward yeah yeah i mean uh, that could be diet wouldn't it be great if somebody could investigate their diet and see and you know and, and i don't know that milk is the, is, is the greatest uh actually the best thing you could do to to build uh bone mass or strength wouldn't it be interesting to find out maybe they've got Conditions where they can't take in a lot of dairy products. I don't, you know, I'm pretty sure if you talk to a, a, a nutritionist, they would say, milk is not the only source for calcium. People make the mistake of thinking they have to drink buckets of milk. Maybe, maybe it's not that. I, I kind of like that idea of your nutrition. You know, I, 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 let's, we'll find out more about that later. I would love to ask somebody yeah. up there about that. And did you guys check into Jimmy Ward and Kowalski T's diet? And why are they the only guys that are breaking the same arm uh, year after year? That's, that's kind of weird. So, yeah. You know, I, I'll add just one more quick thing. Mm. When, when you take in calcium, there's other minerals you have to take in with it because minerals are synergistic in your body. Right. So if you, if you've got a, um, uh, a shortage on one type of mineral that can affect the calcium in the balance. And, and how the body absorbs well, it. Good right? nutrition. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Absorption is another thing. Gut health. I mean, all that stuff. Yeah. So they could yeah, be any sure. number. It's basically all kind of connections to this. And I don't know if the 49ers are going to send their guys to the doctors and have that kind of a thorough checkup, but they probably should. And maybe there's some alternatives they can do to actually stave off these conditions from coming up every year, making their bone. Because these guys are brittle, coach. There's no way you're going to be a football player with brittle bones. Is, uh, Jimmy Ward's breaking the same arm. Well, I don't know. Maybe, did he break the same arm? But anyway, he's an aggressive player. He plays tough. This is probably going to happen again. I don't know that we're talking about Jimmy Ward. I'm talking about Jimmy Ward. I don't even know if he's coming back, you know, but <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, Coach, the final I want to know, and since we're talking about health, are you concerned with Jarek McKinnon and his, his ability to continue with the kind of injury that he sustained last season and the position he's going to have to play next year? No, I'm not. Uh, the state of the health uh, for the medical uh, technology and everything and these guys with the ACLs has been top-notch for the last probably 10, 15 years. True. So uh, there's guys that have come back. Uh, Wentz came back from one uh, from last oh, year. Yeah, his last his year. knee's fine. He, he's got back problems, I understand, but his knee is fine. Mm. So uh, I don't see a problem with it really going forward. I think it'll, it'll have to be a little bit tentative maybe in the beginning mm. you know, with the A's. Mm. But uh, uh. once he gets going through preseason, I think it'll be all right. And you know what? It's a good thing that he got as much work in as he did last year because you're right. It's like I'm thinking of Dalvin Cook. Remember, Dalvin came back from a pretty bad injury on his ACL as well. But it, he yeah. came. I noticed he gingerly came into the season, and I got a feeling it's got to be a little bit middle because I've never torn. I've never torn my knees, so I don't know what guys are thinking when they come back out there. If I explode left, right. If I, you know, is it going to give on me? I mean, I, mentally, I figured that kind of injury would probably uh, bring on that kind of anxiety as you're sitting out there in the field getting ready to explode to your left or right. And I thought I saw Richard Sherman, maybe just a little. He's a tough warrior kind of guy. Was he sort of mm -hmm. babying that Achilles? If he was, I don't blame him. But I, mentally, I'm wondering if these guys can get over that. Because you've probably dealt with players who came back from injuries like that. Did they seem like they were 100% mentally into it? Even if the doctor... Begged him to believe, you're fine. It's not going to go. It's probably stronger now than it was before you injured it. That type of thing? Yeah, that was definitely the case. Uh, we had a couple of guys. Uh, we had a receiver and a, a running back both. 
had uh, knee injuries and uh, we lost him for a year and he mm. came back the next year. And you could see it in practice, they were a little bit tentative. Yeah. And, you know, we just, we just kept telling them, hey, forget about the knee. You know, babying it is not going to protect it. Yeah. So just go, go, you know, you've had the surgery. It's been reconstructed. It's grown back probably stronger than it was. So just go out there and let it loose. See mm -hmm. what happened. Oh, I and uh, once they started to do that, it took a couple of weeks, you know. Yeah. But once they started doing it and then running around and cutting on it, and they said, oh, okay, you know, it feels pretty good. I don't have any problems. So then the mental part goes away. And then, uh, and then they're back. So, because I want to see Jarek McKinnon back so bad because Kyle's plan has got to go through this year, coach. He had his playbook. Was, yeah. I think half of it was written around Jarek McKinnon because he was probably catalyst for everything Kyle wanted to do. One day before yep. Minnesota, boom! Oh, my God. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Coach, a uh, uh, quick prediction, though, before we go. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you got the Rams coming up next week against the Saints, and I'm a, everybody knows how badly I hate the Rams. Uh, it's already mm -hmm. been predicted the Saints should be able to handle this, but it was a close game last time. Uh, how do you, Who do you like in this last playoff game? <laughs> uh, well, um, I like the Rams against the Cowboys because uh, I really thought they just had more weapons and they had yeah. a better system. Yeah. Uh, and I think their coaching staff was pretty, pretty top notch. Yeah. Um, the game is going to be a, a competitive game, but I'm going to take the Saints over the Rams. I just think uh, in their house, the Rams can't handle their their offense. And, uh, <laughs> That's that's what what I'm gonna stick with. I picked uh, New Orleans and Kansas City to be in the Super Bowl, so I'm gonna stick with that. I think Kansas City wins at home Ooh. against the Patriots. Ooh. Coach is gonna go ahead and take the the Chiefs against Tom Brady, Belichick, and these guys all his experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a bold prediction, Coach. I like it, though, because I do want to see Kansas City take... I don't want Tom winning a six ring, because if he gets there, he's going to win six. We're going to have to hear the conversations about how Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Take it to the next level. I don't want that. And, of course, I do not want the Rams no. going anywhere. So if you got the Saints versus Chiefs, I'm the happiest guy in the world for the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> There you go. Coach Coach believes it. I think it's, it's going to be the Saints and the Chiefs and the Saints are going to win the Super Bowl. All right. It'd be Breeze's uh, goodbye call. <laughs> he rides into the sunset holding his trophy with a high old silver LOA. And meanwhile, Tom Brady stands back there saying, well, I'm glad you're leaving because I'm coming back next year. <laughs> Brady will be 45 <laughs> before he stops playing football, coach, at minimum. I, I can see it right now. And yeah. the owner's not going to let Belichick leave. So this is going to go on for a while. Eight years, NFC Championship game. Eight out of ten years of being, I mean, it's just, they're, they're an amazing organization. If the 49ers want to model themselves yeah. after the, uh, the Patriots, I'd have no problem with that. I, people are saying, we don't want to be like the, 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 the Patriots. We're the 49ers. I say, guys, you don't understand. Success is what we want. Yeah. If we've seen what the Patriots the can pa do. The Patriots exposed that, uh, they really exposed that Gus Bradley uh, defense from Seattle, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, they, now, that could be because they don't have the same talent level that Seattle had in, back in the day. But uh, still, I mean, they've got some pretty good talent on that defense. They and, do. Uh, boy, they, they exposed them. And the, and the scheme the Chargers had uh, the week before, absolutely brilliant against a mobile yep. quarterback like Lamar Jackson. I, 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 they, they broke it down in slow mo and they said, look at that. It looks like an all-out flood. What are they playing, cover zero? I said, wow, it worked. And Jackson couldn't run, And you know, but that works on Jackson because of the fact his strength is his running. If you kill all, yeah. if, if you get him, he's not gonna be able to find a receiver as long as there's somebody back there. That's all you need. I, I that it's just you, coach. You went through all that. You plan strategies against teams. Yeah. That is just to watch. That is just God. That's awesome. Yeah, I used to, we used to love the zone defenses, and boy, I mean the veteran quarterbacks pick those apart. You can't run zone. You got to mix it up. Bradley didn't do that, mm. so San Diego suffered and lost for it. So hopefully uh, Kansas City doesn't make the same mistake. And uh, the weather, I understand, is going to be a little worse in Kansas City. Yeah. 
So hopefully that's enough to get the Chiefs through the win. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't want Brady winning that six one. <laughs> That's just more than any 49er fan can have to deal with. We're already having to hear yeah. about how Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Hey, Coach, it's been awesome, man. I tell you what, give me, I'm going to three, two, one you, and give me that yell, Coach. Three, two, right. one. Nine. Thank you, Coach. Now, now you know our Coach is my go-to guy. Coach, man. In fact, from listening to Coach, maybe Coach should be the strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> coach is a trainer, is a bodybuilder, and Coach at the same time. He knows everything. Did you hear him talk about minerals and everything else? Coach knows. Because we can't have these dudes getting all broke up every year. Fam, that's what beats us more than anything else the last two seasons. Injuries, injuries, injuries. We can't keep getting injured. So, you know, so I'm looking forward to because people think we're that bad of a team. We ain't that bad of a team. We're an injured team. Anyway, thank you, Coach, and I'll see you. Fam, I'll see you Friday, just two days before the Rams get their butt handed to them. Ah, oh, God, I can't wait to see that and see them walk their little dejected butts off the field. <laughs> I got it. I got to stop wishing too hard because if it ramps up and win, I'll be so bothered. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you Friday to talk more Niners football. Fam, please don't forget to hit that like. <laughs> you know I love like. <laughs> and share. Subscribe if you just joined us for the first time. I already love you. And we'll see you Friday right here. <sighs> Count me down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have to be sick. Oh, this new crazy mother.